Okay, so last time we met, we talked about percents and converting percents to decimals and fractions and whatever. So if we had like 245%, the way I convert that to a fraction, how do I do it? So 245 over 100. A percent is always out of 100. And then, of course, we convert that into a mixed number. So 100 goes in there twice. 45 left over, and then reduce by 5. So 45 divided by 5 is 9. 100 divided by 5, 20. Now why did I leave space there? We still got our 2 there. So that would be 2 and 9 twentieths. Or if I wanted to convert like 43% into a decimal, it would be what? Yeah, 43 over 100, which divides out to be 0.43. Just move the decimal two spots. If I have 0.6 as a decimal, and I want to convert it into a percent, it would become 60%. And if I had 2 sevenths as a fraction, and I want to convert it into a percent, Remember, 2 out of 7 is what out of 100? And how do we find the missing number? We cross multiply. 2, by, two times 100 is 200. Then we, the two numbers that are diagonal with each other, we multiply. Then the number that's diagonal with the one that's missing, we divide by. So we divide by 7. 200 divided by 7 is 28.5714286 approximately. So that would round to 28.57%. What you think? Look familiar? Okay. Well, today, we're going to look at problems like this. Find 30% of 50. We're going to use the same structure we used right here for converting a fraction into a percent. We're going to start with a percent. I like to always start with a percent. So 30% is 30 over 100. Now before I go any further, let's describe what this 30 out of 100 means. The bottom number here, the 100, usually describes a whole amount or what's called a base amount. Sometimes it's the beginning amount, what we start with. So it, it is the base amount, and the base is either the whole thing or the beginning amount. The top number then is the piece of interest, or the portion of interest. It's a, a piece of that base that we're focusing in on. So like I said, if, if I said 67 point, or 66.67% of the students in this classroom are auto technician students, what that saying is out of all the students in the classroom, so the 100 represents all the students in the classroom, 66.67% are auto technician students. So that means I'm focusing on the auto technician students. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of? Okay. So now on the other side of this, I need another fraction so I can do my cross, multiply, and divide. There's two other numbers up here. Now the 50 is pretty obvious. The other number is the number I'm being asked to find. Am I being asked to find the piece, the 30%? I'm going to be asked to find the whole thing. The piece. Find 30%. So what I'm being asked to find matches up with the 30. That goes on top. Also, we can look at this 30% of 50. You can read that as out of 50, which implies that has to go on bottom. So now we cross, multiply, and divide. 30 times 50, 1,500, divided by 100 is 15. So 15 is 30% of 50. Any questions? Okay. 
So blank is 160% of 30. Where are we going to start? A percent, right? 160%, which is 160 out of 100. You'll notice here that the portion of interest is bigger than the whole thing. 160 is bigger than 100. So we have a missing number and we have the 30. Which one lines up with our 160? Well, blank is 160, right? So that missing number matches with the 160. Of 30, again, we can read that as out of 30, which would imply the 30 is on bottom. Any questions on why I put the numbers where I did? So now we're going to cross multiply. Which two numbers do we multiply? 160 and 30. So that's 4,800. Divided by the 100 is 48. So 48 is 160% of 30. Now you notice 48 is bigger than 30, but again, the percent was bigger than 100. So the piece of interest is going to be bigger than the whole amount. So here, 80% of 20 is blank. So I'm going to start with the percent again, as always. 80% is 80 over 100. On the other side, where does the 20 go, top or bottom? Yeah, we think of that as out of 20. That implies it goes on bottom. Very good. 80% is blank implies the blank goes with the 80. So then what? Cross multiply which two numbers? 80 times 20 is 1600. Divide by 100 is 16. So all three problems I've done so far have been of the same form. I have the percent and I have the whole thing and I want to find that portion that I'm interested in. This one's going to be slightly different. Forty-five is thirty percent of blank. Well, I have thirty percent, so I'm going to get thirty over one hundred. Where's the forty-five go? Top or bottom? Top. Forty-five is thirty percent of blank. Again, read that as out of blank implies that missing number goes on bottom. Now it's still cross multiply and divide, but you'll notice we're going to be multiplying in a different direction this time. Before we were multiplying down on the diagonal, here is the diagonal going up that has both numbers. So 100 times 45 is 4,500. Divided by 30 is 150. 45 is 30% 30 of 150. So even though the numbers are in different places here, it's still cross multiply and divide. Looks a little different because we're multiplying in a different direction, but it's still the same process. One hundred times forty-five is forty-five hundred, then divided by thirty. So here, you guys tell me how to set it up. Seventy percent is seventy over one hundred. Twenty-eight over blank. Good. Of blank can be read as out of blank implies that blank is on bottom. So then what? So twenty-eight times one hundred is twenty-eight hundred. Divided by 70 is 40. Not 40%. 70% of 40 is 28.
32 is blank percent of 80. Now, so far I've been telling you we always start with the percent, but we don't have a percent here. That doesn't change anything. We still start with the percent. We're still going to do blank over 100. We don't know what the percent is, but we know it's going to be out of 100. Now, which number goes on top, the 32 or the 80? 32. 32. The 32 is blank percent. Of 80, again, read it out of 80. It means the 80 has to go on bottom. Now, again, the numbers are in a different position this time, but the process is still the same. What two numbers do we cross multiply? 100 times 32 is 3,200, and then we divide by the 80. So that's 40 out of 100, or 40%. So 32 is 40% of 80. <clears throat> Tell me what to do here. You're missing the percent, so it's blank over 100. What's that? 12 over 60. Good. Of 60, read it as out of 60, implies the 60 is on bottom. So the 12 has to be on top. Then how do we calculate? One hundred times twelve is twelve hundred. Divided by sixty is twenty. So it's twenty out of one hundred, or twenty percent. What do you think? Better than a sharp stick in the eye. You seem less sure about that every day. You're starting to wonder about the size of the stick now, aren't you? Some of us were taught something called the rate method of percents. This is how I was taught, actually. We'll go off one spot here. If I were to use the rate method, in the rate method, you turn your percent to a decimal. A rate is just a percent written as a decimal. So 30% is 0.3. And in this case, you'd take the 50 times 0.3, which is 15, which is our answer here. In this problem, 160 would be 1.6. And you would take 30 times 1.6 would give you 48. Again, that's our answer. Well, this seems a lot easier, doesn't it? Heck, even down here, 80% is 0 0.8. We're going to take 20 times 0 0.8 gives us 16, which is our answer. Well, if this is so easy, why don't we use it? Well, some people do. But we run into problems like this one. Here's 30% is 0.3. But it would not be 45 times 0.3 here because we're missing the whole amount. It's 45 divided by 0.3 is 150. Or down here, 70% is 0.7. It's 28 divided by 0.7 to give us 40. So if you use the rate method... You have to change your percent to a decimal, but then you have to decide, do I multiply by that decimal or do I divide by that decimal? And you can also run into a third type of problem here where you're missing the percent. Here you do the 32 divided by 80 is going to give us 0.4. Then you move the decimal to make it 40%. So there's three different processes. You would have to decide which process to use. If I use this method, the proportion method, I just have to line up the numbers, get the numbers in the proportion. It's always cross, multiply, and divide. The calculation is always the same. Now, there are applications we are going to see where the rate method is simpler and it gets used. Like if it's stuff where you always know the whole amount and you're trying to find that portion of interest over and over again, like interest calculations and commission calculations and stuff like that, or efficiency. If you're doing that same calculation over and over again, Using the rate method makes sense because you just convert it to a decimal and multiply. So we're going to look at some of those applications over the next week or so. But for the most part, this ratio and proportion method is simpler, especially when we get into word problems. For example, let's say that PMX Corporation...
estimates weekly profits as 12% of net sales. Find the net sales for a week where gross profits, or profits, I should say, I didn't say gross earlier, so I'll just say profits. For a week where profits are estimated at $38,772. Is there a percent in this problem? 12%, yes. So 12 out of 100. Now remember, the 100 represents a whole amount or a base amount. That's the, the number that is the number that everything is based out of or derived out of, the whole group. The 12% represents the piece that we're focusing in on. What is the piece that we're focusing in on here? Well, we have net sales and we have profits. One of them is a portion or a piece of the other. Which one is the whole thing? Which one's the piece? Profit. Profits are 12% of the net sales. Read that as out of the net sales, right? So the profits are the 12%. Net sales are the whole thing, 100%. Does that make sense? Profits are always a piece of your sales. Any questions so far? So now on the other side here, we have the 38,772. Does that go on top or bottom? Well, is that profits or net sales? Profits. That has to go on top. So what does that give us? 323,100 dollars. All right, cross multiply and divide. Oh, we did something wrong. 100 times 38,772 divided by 12. 223,100. 38,772 times 100 divided by 12. I think you did times 12 divided by 100. Got it to work? Yeah. Okay. Let's say you currently make, currently earn $14.20 per hour. Your boss. just gave you a $0.71 cent an hour raise. What percent raise is that? So we're trying to find the percent here, right? If we look at it, the percent is going to describe the raise. We're asked what percent raise? 100 represents the whole amount or the starting amount. The beginning number, which is your 1420. That's what your pay was before the raise. So what goes on top? 
71 cent raise because the percent and the 71 cents both describe the raise. So we cross multiply 100 times 0 0.71 divided by 1420. Five. Five out of 100 or 5%. Make sense? Yes, no. Not sure, don't care. I'm sensing the energy just oozing from you today. One of those nights? Okay. Okay, let's see. You buy parts. For $180 and add an 8% markup what do you charge a lot of shops do have a slight markup on parts just to for their handling pickup whatever sometimes it's called a carrying charge because they have to pay for the parts and wait for you to pay for the parts so it pays for them having their money tied up in it whatever so we have the eight percent here let's start out with that on the other side where's the 180 going to go on bottom because the 180 represents the full price of the parts the 100 represents the whole price of the parts. The 8 represents the markup. So if I cross multiply and divide here, 8 times 180 divided by 100, I get $14.40. Is that my answer? No. no. I want to know what do you charge. So what do I have to do to find that? 180 plus the 14. 194.40. That's what you're going to charge. Well, if we look at what happened there, we had what we paid, plus we're going to add a markup to it. That's going to give us what we charge. And in these problems, every, no every item is described with two different numbers. In this case, the one number was the dollar amount. The other number is always going to be percents. Each item is always going to be described with a percent. The markup is 8%. The price you paid, the 180, that matched up with the 100%. So 100% always comes into play somewhere. Which means that the, what you charge is 100 plus 8 or 108%. So what you could have done here, rather than finding the 8% and adding it on, is you could have just found 108% of 180. And there, when you cross multiply and divide, it's going to spit out the 194.40 for you in one step. Now in a problem like this, it's not too much work to find the percentage and add it on. But there are going to be problems where you have no choice. For example, Let's say that after 6% tax, you pay $477. How much was the tax? So you just find 6% of the 477, right? Say no. No. Now look at that 6%. The 6 represents the tax, obviously. What's the 100 represent? That's the price before tax or after tax? Before tax. Is the 477 the price before tax or after tax? That's after so on the other side of this proportion, we don't have either one of those numbers. 
We don't have the amount of the tax or the amount of the, the price before tax. We're looking for the amount of the tax, how much tax you have paid. How much was the tax? We're looking for that amount. But we have to have the other number. We can't have two missing numbers. But if we think about it, the original price was 100%. After tax, we paid 100 plus 6. So we paid 106%. So now the 100 is still the price before tax. The 106 is after tax. That's the full price plus the tax. So on the other side, where's the 477 go, top or bottom? It's after tax. So now we can cross, multiply, and divide. 100 times 477 divided by 106 is $450. So is that my answer, 450? No, I still have to do some work. I still have to do the 477 minus the 450. You get $27 in tax. That is my tax. So when you have a percent increase like that, like a tax or a, a markup or whatever, you do have to be very careful. Won't do it because the, the, the percent is not based off of the 477. It's based off of whatever the price was before you did the tax. So remember, whatever matches up with the 100 here has to be that initial amount, whatever the calculation is based off of. And the six percent does not refer to the the six percent does not refer to the four seventy seven. The six percent is calculated from whatever the price was before. So the one hundred percent has to be whatever the six percent is calculated off of. Let's say you receive Come on. A 9% trade discount. What a trade discount is, if you're a mechanic or a welder or whatever, um, you have a different standing with suppliers. If I walk into the auto parts store down here, they're going to charge me their regular customer price. You as a mechanic, if you have an account with them and you buy enough parts with them to establish it, they're going to start giving you a trade discount. They're going to say, oh, we're going to give you, maybe at first it might be only 3 or 4% off, but it could build, I've seen it as high as 18% discount for a trade discount. We're going to give you a discount because you are in the business and we want you to buy your stuff from us. So you receive a 9% trade get discount. How much do you pay for parts listed? Now, list price is what they would charge any customer off the street. Listed at $270. So again, here, you could find the 9%. The 9% is the discount. The 100% is the full price. Or in this case, what we call the list price, right? On the other side, where's the 270 go? Bottom, it's the list price. So then we cross, multiply, and divide. 9 times 270 divided by 100 is $24.30, I believe. Nobody's going to double check me. You're just going to trust me. That gets kind of risky at this point in the year. So $24.30 is the correct discount. But again, that's not our answer. How do we find our answer? Yeah, 270 minus the 2430 gives us $245.70. Now, once again, we look at this. This is the list price or the full price, if you want. You can call it whatever you want to. You subtracted your discount. 
to get what you paid. The words you put in here don't matter. You could put full price, list price, put before discount, whatever. You minus discount, minus trade discount, whatever. Equals, cost, what you paid, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter what the words are as long as you know what they mean. And again, just like before, these are the dollar amounts, but every number is also going to be described by a percent. And we have, of course, the discount is 9%. The list price of the beginning amount is always 100%. So this is 100 minus 9. The amount paid is 91%. So what we could have done here, rather than finding 9% and subtracting it, is we could have just found 91% of $270. And when we cross multiply and divide it there, 91 times 275 divided by 100 it would have given us $245.70. Any questions? After an 8% discount. $322. How much did you save? Do I find 8% of 322? The 8 represents the discount, right? One hundred, however, represents the full price. One hundred is the full price. Is the three twenty-two the full price? No, you cannot put three twenty-two at the one hundred. We don't know what the full price is. Do we know what the discount was? No, that's what we're looking for. We're trying to find the amount of the discount. So once again, we have to look at this. Is after an eight percent discount, how much do you pay? 100 minus 8 is 92 percent so the 92 percent is the amount that you paid after discount 100 is the full amount before the discount so on the other side here where does the 322 go on top and we cross multiply. 100 times 322 divided by 92 is 350. And we're asking how much did you save, so we do still have to do 350 minus 322. $28, you got it. That is your discount. Pretend that's, pretend that's legible. Does that make sense? So you're talking about discounts or markups or taxes or increases or decreases. You gotta be very, very careful. So in your book, page 84 through 89, 1 through 53, the odds. Deal with calculations with percents. Make sure you do the story problems at least, okay? Story problems are a big deal in percents.